Hey there YouTube, Arbonus69 here and today I'm going to have a look at another 3D printing video. It's been a while since I did one, in fact it's been a long time since I did one. If you have a look up here you can see the unboxing video for my uh, CTC 3D printer I bought off eBay. It's a lovely printer but it does take a bit of TLC and a bit of care and attention to keep it running smoothly. Now one of the things I've been looking to do on this printer is an active cooling mod for the hot ends. Now, before I get any further, I will say, if you do this mod yourself, you do it at your own peril. There is a chance that you will break your printer because you are soldering parts onto the mighty board underneath. You could break it, it could become a heavy paperweight. So you do this at your own risk if you do it. I'm going to take the chance and do this myself anyway and see how it turns out. What I will do, I'll pop all the details down below of parts you'll need, the files of Thingiverse you'll need to print, None of these parts that I've printed are my own design, they're all somebody else's of Thingiverse, or their details will be down below, you can check them out yourself. Anyway, let's have a look at the parts I've printed ahead of this mod. Right, and here we are, the fully assembled part that I've printed ahead of time. Now it's made up of three separate parts, um, the files like I said are all in the description down below, you can check them out. The part you will need to buy is a 12 volt um, fan. The details I think are on the Thingiverse file as well for this. Um, this one I bought off eBay, if I can dig out the details for it I will put them in description below. The three parts are the active cooling fan ducting, for a better word of it. There are two spacers on either side. There's this lovely part here that's an additional to it all that allows you to easily fit and remove the part. It just simply slips underneath the cooling fans for the hot end. Now, as you can see, there are three holes here and here, and then on the side there are three more here and three more here. This is to jet the air around the hot end. The problem I've got, and the reason I wanted to do this, is because bridging doesn't work very well for me without active cooling. It tends to fail quite badly. Also, as you can see, uh, just under here, there's a part of the print that didn't work out too well, and that again is due to bridging. It didn't bridge the gaps over the uh, the runs for the air underneath. So this is the prime reason I'm doing this mod. So, let's have a look at what other parts we're going to need. Right, so what I've got so far uh, laid out here, and what I believe and I hope are going to be the parts I need, and nothing else. So I've got some needle nose pliers, I've got these very, very tiny MOSFET chips that I ordered. Uh, I got five of them, came from China, dirt cheap, took over a month to get here, so please, if you do order from the same place I did, be patient. Um, I've got solder with a flux core, heat shrink, a connector part, um, I have no idea what it was called officially, um, I looked it up and found it, details are down below for this part. Desolder gun in case I muck up, and of course soldering iron. I would recommend not using a gas soldering iron, if you have one use a mains one. Mine isn't brilliant, but it's enough to melt solder and solder enough for me. So let's go and take a look what we'll be doing. So as I said, this is my CTC 3D printer. As you can see, we've got the... Um, the active cooling hot end and there the nozzles so what happens if we take this off the black bar here simply slots in just go over the top and have a look there we are simply slots underneath the fans and clicks into place it's held in there's these two little lugs here and what they do let me see if I can get a shot of this there you are you can see just underneath there there's two lugs that stick down on this lip. They sit into those recesses lovely and it holds it in place nice and snug for when you're printing. It also makes it easy to remove. So you simply offer it up, slot it in. I don't want to push it in all the way because I need to take it off again, but that's the idea of it. So what I need to do now is remove the hot ends from the printer as I need to flip the whole thing upside down to make it easier for me to solder. So to save the boredom, jump cut. Right, so that is now the hot ends removed and I've turned the printer upside down so it's now standing on its lid. So as you can see I've already removed the cover plate that sits over the bottom so we can now get access to, I do believe it's a mighty board, please correct me in the, uh, the comments if I'm wrong. But if you look down here you can see all the little MOSFETs are already soldered 
and oops, there's a gap here for one of them. This is the one that we need to solder on. So, as you can see, there are one, two, three, and four little silver tabs that we need to solder onto. And then the base of it, I think, solders onto this. I hope. We'll find out. So, let's go ahead and open one of the MOSFET chips up and rest it in place. I've just rested the new chip in place now. So, for reference, there is my finger for the size of these things. They are tiny. I am not looking forward to soldering this. Um, I'll do my best to record as much as I can and we'll see how it goes. So I think the first job will be to tin each leg of this to make it easier to solder in place. So let's get that done. Right, so I'm gonna go and try and tin these pins. Sorry if my big fat fingers get in the way. This is not going to be easy. one hell of a wobble on. Right, there's a tiny bit of solder on each pin. Hopefully that might be enough to hold it in place. So, now let's offer the chip up and see what we can do. Right, so as you can see, I've got it soldered on. Um, it's not the world's best solder jobs, but you can see there's a blob of solder on each of the pins. There is a gap between each of them. So these two over here, I'm gonna get an X-Acto knife and split them just to make sure, but they looked fine through a magnifying glass. So, the next job, is now, that's the connector that I bought off eBay. That simply just slides in there, and the wires, if I can just get this out, go in the end there. But to do that, let me just pop this back in, sorry about my hand being in shot here. Now we'll leave it down there. The next job is the wire off the 12-volt uh, the fan. This needs to be cut, as the cable obviously needs to come from the print head. Oops, that was the light. Um, up the braided cable, out the top here, and come out down this loom, and then into the connector down here. So, I'm not going to bother filming, um, cutting the wire off and soldering new wire on, that's kind of boring. Um, I'll cut back when I'm ready to connect it into this plug. Fingers crossed I haven't broke my 3D printer. Right, so I've got some cable laid in, I've managed to thread it through this part of trunking, I've left some spare out here. What I need to do now is trace all the way up this cable wrap and all the way down here. However, it was proving too hard to try and thread it. So what I'm doing now is taking this cable wrap off all the way up. I'll lay the cable in and then rewrap the whole thing again. Hopefully this should make life a little bit easier than trying to thread it. Right, I will join you back once I've done this. Right, so I've got the cable threaded up through the tube. I've cut this cable, I've also cut the plug off the end of the uh, the ducted cooling fan mod we've done. I have pre-put some heat shrink on the cable and I have soldered the two wires together. Now my initial aim was to fire the M126 and then the M127 command once I got the, uh, the MOSFET on the bottom connected. However, the problem being I couldn't get this this CDC printer to hook up to my laptop via USB so I couldn't do it. Now what I think, I have the positive and the negative right way around. Um, I think only time is going to tell when I turn it on and fire a print at it. But the next job is to get this heat shrink slid up over these joints and then shrunk on. So I will do that now. So that's the heat shrink on, that's the fan connected. Um, that is everything done. Now I just need to rewrap the cable, tuck this underneath here and uh, fire a test print and see what happens. So I'll come back when it's all connected. Right, so we've got Simplify 3D fired up now and I've imported the 20mm hollow cube print. Something nice, small and fast. We have a quick look at the process settings. We've got no raft, no support, We've got a 1.5 mil layer height, we've got six top solid layers, three bottom and two outer shells. It's set with an infill but there is no infill on this model. Um, there's no support, we've got the right extruder at 210, the heated bed at 60. I've got the cooling fan to come on at layer 3 and then ramp up to 100%. 
So hopefully this is going to work. Um, and the print speed is at uh, 1.9. So if we prepare to print, let me zoom in a bit. So if we wind this back, you will see, oops, there we go. That is a totally hollow cube. All the way up till we get to somewhere around here. There we go. So what I'm going to do now is save this to my SD card, take it over to the printer, plug it in, and see what happens. Fingers crossed we get no magic smoke when it kicks in the fan. Right, these are two 20mm hollow calibration cubes. I'll put the details down below for the links on Thingiverse for them. This one I printed off on the printer before the active cooling mode was done and admittedly the bed was perfectly level and it was printed at a much higher resolution. This one was done at um, a much lower resolution as you can tell by the base and also I had a job leveling the printer and that's due to the active cooling fan sitting quite close to the hot ends. I couldn't actually see what I was doing very well. So I think further down the line I'm going to add a connector an inline connector on the uh, cable for the cooling mod so I can unplug and remove the fan easily. Now you can see on the side here um, this is definitely a much lower resolution print than this is however the big difference is when you look at the top which is why I've done the active cooling mod. So as you can see without the cooling mod bridging didn't work very well on my uh, CTC 3D printer it was a complete mess no matter what settings I tried, this was about the best I could get. I have done many, many of these cubes before and couldn't get a decent bridge. Now this, with the active cooling mod on, you can see is much better. Although we have got a problem here, that is due to the bed not being perfectly level. Over here, you can see the bridging has done a lot better and has covered the, uh, the gap perfectly. So I think with a little bit more tweaking, this active cooling mod is going to pay dividends in the end for getting prints to come out a lot better and a lot cleaner in the future. So there we have it. That is the active cooling mod for the CTC 3D printer. I hope you found the video interesting. I hope you found it uh, useful. If you are planning to do the mod, please remember, as I said at the beginning of the video, you do this at your own risk. I take no responsibility. If you break your printer, it's on you. I take no responsibility for this. As I said at the beginning of the video, this is a risky process. You can break it. Anyway, if you found the video of help, um, found it instructional, found it useful, anything at all, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And please do pop some comments below and let me know what you thought of the, the project and anything I can do better in the future. I will read your comments and I will try. Until next time, take care.